Hi everyone. In this one, we're going to be doing a root canal on an infected canine tooth. This is a patient that came in with pain on his canine tooth, and the x-ray shows that there's a dark lesion at the end of the root tip indicating an infection. This tooth also had quite a bit of gum disease. You can see the bone loss there. Um, we talked about options, and the patient wanted to save the tooth, so we're going to begin by freezing with articane. There was also a little bit of decay on the buccal aspect of the tooth under an old composite, so we decided that we're going to replace the filling before the root canal. If you just want to wash the root canal, it begins at three minutes. But for the filling, I'm going to begin retracting the gum tissue to get access to the margin of the healthy tooth with a couple of size one cords, packing it in with a periodontal probe. And then once we have some access to the margin, we're going to begin removing the old composite with a high speed round diamond and removing the composite until we're mostly down to the natural tooth surface and then we're going to remove the tooth decay with a slow speed carbide burr and also remove any old restorative material with our slow speed hand piece and then the prep is pretty much complete we're going to make sure that we can see our margin and then restore the tooth by starting to etch with 35% phosphoric acid for about five seconds. Rinse thoroughly, dry it off, and then add our restorative material. This is Fuji 2 Light Cure. And then I'll overfill the cavity and then adapt the restorative material to the margins with a moist cotton pellet. Jackie's going to light cure that. And then we're going to begin removing the excess restorative material until we're back down on natural tooth. And I'm going to use this high speed flame on a high speed handpiece or the carbide flame. This is a great burr. I get it from Brassler. And once we're back down on the natural tooth margin, We're going to rinse the filling, dry it off the surface, and then apply a coating agent. And this is Equia Coat. Going to light cure that, and then that is finished with the filling. So we're going to get started with the root canal. Going to remove the cord from the sulcus. And I'll always do root canal access without a rubber dam so that I can visualize the axis of the tooth. <clears throat> and we're just going to start by accessing the pulp chamber from the lingual surface with a high speed handpiece round diamond I'm going to use here. I'm going to go down a few millimeters until we can see that we have unroofed the pulp chamber or that we've accessed the pulp chamber. I'm going to verify with our explorer and we get a good stick. So at this point we're going to put a rubber dam on and then proceed with the root canal procedure. I'm not a fan of uh, single tooth access when I'm doing root canal. I like to have room to work. So I'm going to extend the access two teeth to the left and two teeth to the right. And using some liquid dam, you can use a month's discovery bird to unroof the rest of the pulp chamber before going in with our first endodontic file. So we're going to take our SX orifice shaping burr, apply some RC prep lubricant, and then shape the orifice, the coronal third of the root canal with this shaping burr, irrigate with full strength hypochlorite, and then begin taking our files down to length. I clip the apex locator right to my file and then it will bark at me when I'm at apex. I'll take the uh, glide path file down to the red line <clears throat> to ensure that I have patency. And then I'll take the shaping files down to the green line. So this is a 1504 in the system that I use, irrigate with full strength hypo. This is a 2504. These are heat treated files, so they're very bendy. And I use them once, you know, separations happen to all of us, but it's, fortunately it's pretty rare. This is a 2506. Going to take to the green line with our RC prep, irrigate, and I'll always use an endo activator for the last two files. So we're going to go in with the activator for 15 seconds or so, and then irrigate.
irrigate again with hypochlorite. You can see the tooth is dark, indicating that it has been necrotic for quite some time. And this is our final file, it's a 3504. Take it down to the green line. We have a good apical stop. And then that concludes the preparation. We're gonna do a final irrigation. Activate once more. And then in this case, I did decide to take a cone fit radiograph. So we finished with a 35 and I'm gonna take the cone fit with an F2, which is 25. I usually size down my cone. And in this case, actually we ended up maybe a little bit thin, a little bit long. So decided to size up and then I was confident that that would be a appropriate cone size. So we're gonna finish with an F3. One last irrigation here to ensure that the canal is fully sterilized. And then we're gonna dry it with some paper points and I'll, I'll really use thin paper points. This is an F1 04 taper. Leave it in for a few seconds, get most of the hypochlorite out, put a second one in, and that comes out mostly dry. One more for good measure. And that comes out fully dry, so we're going to begin obturating. This is a bioceramic sealer, and we're going to use single cone hydraulic condensation obturation technique, which I think is the only logical way to obturate a tooth. Taking the material down as apically as we can, and then applying our master GP cone. I'll usually tamp it up and down a few times to verify that the sealer material reaches the apex. Place it down to length, and here's our x-ray. Somebody on Dental Town told me that I should take an x-ray after I've placed the cone before filling it up, which I agree is, is a probably the right way to do it so took a took a PA after we uh, sat the cone and we were happy with it gonna snip the excess and then sear off the remainder with a heated plugger and then just kind of pack it down until we have a good four or five millimeters of space to restore the access cavity Gonna clean it up with a high speed round and then etch and just restore. You know, usually I'll use uh, Equia Forte for load bearing restorations, but we got away with a pretty, pretty sniper access. So we're just gonna use Fuji 2 just cause it's quick. I think the glass based restorations have the best seal. So they're pretty much all I use. Gonna finish off the Restoration until we're back on the natural margins, cure it, remove the rubber dam, take a final x-ray, dismiss the patient. We're going to anticipate some pretty good healing on this one, so I'll probably take an x-ray in a year and hopefully see that bone grow back.